This is the battlefield of survival. Africa, three million years ago. A place where our earliest ancestors fought with death itself for just a scrap of meat. Here begins the story of the life and death of Australopithecus. Welcome to the first episode of the complete story of human evolution. In 1974, scientists discovered a fossil in Africa that dates back to about 3 million years ago. Scientists say this is one of the most important fossils ever found in the world. They named this fossil Lucy. This fossil belonged to a species of human ancestors called Australopithecus. Scientists believe that Lucy's fossil represents one of the first steps in the evolution toward modern humans. All of these primates, as historical evidence and fossils show, lived in Africa. Today, Africa is full of diverse wildlife. Three million years ago, it was much the same. Although many of the animals that lived back then are now extinct. One of the most famous of these extinct animals was the saber-toothed cat. In Lucy's time, the fiercest creatures in Africa were the crocodiles. They had an advantage over other animals because everyone needed water. And crocodiles ruled the waters, they were never short of food. Crocodiles would lie in wait in the water for any animal that came to drink. Lucy was one of those animals. Life for Lucy was extremely harsh. When she went to drink water, crocodiles could catch her. When she went to gather fruit, saber-toothed cats could attack her. Even when she went hunting, she risked becoming prey to other predators. Obtaining food and water was a constant struggle. About 90% of the Australopithecus fossils found the same species as Lucy show evidence of having been killed by predators. You won't find a fossil that isn't marked in some way. Some skulls even have leopard teeth marks. But most show clear signs of crocodile attacks. You can easily identify the crocodile bite marks. The heat was intense, thirst was pressing, and animals had to approach water to survive. But drinking water without extreme caution often meant death as crocodiles could lie in ambush for hours. One fossil is especially remarkable, the skull of a three-year-old Australopithecus child. This child was not killed by crocodiles, leopards, or saber-toothed cats. The skull shows the marks of a powerful bird, possibly an eagle or another large raptor. Among all these predators and killings, many skulls were crushed by carnivores. But Lucy's skull was found intact, it is clear she died a natural death. The fossils of Lucy and other Australopithecus show scientists that these creatures gradually moved their lives from the trees to the ground. How do we know this? From their shoulder blades. Their shoulders are somewhere between those of humans and monkeys. You know, monkey shoulders are very strong because they need them to hang and climb through trees. The shoulders of Australopithecus show signs of weakening, indicating that their bodies no longer needed such powerful shoulders for life in the trees. While the shoulders were becoming weaker, other parts of their body, like the brain, were becoming stronger. We mentioned that the biggest threat for Australopithecus was crocodiles. But there was an even bigger challenge, filling their stomachs. Their teeth show that they were herbivores, eating all kinds of leaves, grasses, and fruits. When scientists realized they ate roots, they understand how intelligent these creatures were. Eating roots shows that they knew roots could satisfy them better, and here's the fascinating part. Even today, chimpanzees, gorillas, or other monkeys don't figure out to dig up roots and eat them. This shows how long ago Australopithecus split from other primates. 
No other monkey had decided to leave the trees like they did. In some parts of Africa, their footprints have been discovered, showing that they walked on two legs and didn't use their hands to help them walk. As we mentioned, Australopithecus had to rely on plants to fill their stomachs. They could eat meat too, but they rarely caught any because, unlike other predators, they weren't strong enough. If you look at modern monkeys, they do use tools, but not modified tools. For example, if they want to break something, they pick up a stone and smash it. That's a tool, but it's unmodified. It's very likely that creatures like Lucy, the Australopithecus, actually modified stones, sharpening them to use as tools. This shows that they had moved away from ordinary monkeys. Their intelligence was developing. The oldest modified stones discovered are about 3.3 million years old, slightly older than Lucy. No animal today can carve and sharpen a stone like that. This shows that Lucy's brain was working in a way that helped her survive and avoid predators. Australopithecus were at most about one meter tall. With that height, they couldn't run fast either. Evidence shows that they eventually started eating meat, but they couldn't hunt. Instead, they had to wait for predators to make a kill and then hang around, waiting for the leftovers. Lions, leopards, and other predators would leave part of the prey behind. Because Australopithecus had hands and intelligence and could make tools, they realized that if they broke the bones, they could access even more meat inside. They could eat all the meat and leave just the bones behind. When we compare Lucy's skull with that of a modern chimpanzee, we can see that her skull was somewhat larger. Chimpanzees are among the smartest monkeys, but they can't make tools, nor do they think to dig up and eat plant roots. Even if you give a chimpanzee a closed box of food, it often won't figure out how to open it to eat. Next to a fossil found in a cave in South Africa, a stone was discovered that is about 2.9 million years old. Scientists believe that Australopithecus shaped the stone to look like a face. Some say it could be considered the world's first sculpture. Lucy, the fossil we introduced earlier, was a female Australopithecus and probably had children. Her fossil shows clear differences from a female chimpanzee. For example, chimpanzees can give birth quite easily, but Lucy's species likely experienced very painful childbirths, often ending in the death of the baby or even the mother. Another difference between Australopithecus and gorillas or other monkeys is in their social life. In gorilla groups, for example, there is usually only one dominant male. But Australopithecus did not have this problem. One more major difference is that unlike other primates, the males of Australopithecus did not abandon the female after birth. Instead, they stayed and lived together as a family. This is likely the first family life in the history of humankind, something we still do today. When Lucy's skeleton was pieced together, it showed that she had died a natural death. But scientists also found that she had lived with a broken bone, which means she managed to survive despite the injury. Another remarkable difference in Australopithecus was their emotional life. When one of them died, the others would grieve a behavior very rare among primates. Only a few modern chimpanzees show something similar, such as when a mother mourns her dead infant and may carry the body for several days. But the story does not end here. We must understand where we came from, but through the lens of science. If you like to see the next episode of the Human Evolution Podcast, let me know in the comments so our next video will be about it.